Hello everyone, my name is Ade and I'm the editor of the Zade Journal. Welcome to the very first episode of Entrepreneurs Today. This will be an interactive Q&A session to address the finest details that aspiring entrepreneurs inquire before launching their own businesses. Today I'll be discussing this topic with Sami. Just to no let you know a little bit about him, Sami is an entrepreneur who is running three different businesses and has managed to create Ethiopia's fastest growing full service creative agency, Spotlight Communications and Marketing. And you're going to be seeing a lot of him in this series. I have collected some questions from various aspiring entrepreneurs for our first episode, so let's jump right to it. Mm -hmm. So, one of the first questions that I got, and one of the biggest questions that I got, is how would you summarize the mindset of high-achieving entrepreneurs? I think that's a very good question. So the difference between high-achieving entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs or people who just start their own business is the compelling reason why you're starting that business. The very basic mindset of high-achieving entrepreneurs is different from everybody else. They do things differently, they have a, collect uh, a collective um, principle of obsession with winning, and a lot of entrepreneurs that you know, if you put them together in one room, they pretty much have similar stories to tell. This is because the basic traits of winning entrepreneurs, high achieving entrepreneurs is basically the same. So the first thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need to be extremely organized. You're gonna be able to learn as much things in your industry as possible in order to become an expert in your field of studies. And the one thing that you need to know is a compelling reason to start your own business. If you don't have that purpose, that clarity of the end, what it would mean to be an aspiring entrepreneur, I think you lost at the beginning of your game. A lot of people jump into the business of starting their own thing without understanding that it takes blood, sweat, and tears to put together something really big. Start with the end in mind. That's what I say for everybody. So in order to summarize the mindset of high achieving entrepreneurs, I would basically say you need to be able to do a lot more than what everybody else does in their business. And I think that's an interesting point that you brought up because I think a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs, they start and they go into this business thinking that I'm going to be my own boss. I'm going to set my own hours. I'm going to like give myself freedom. So what's your take on that? See, that's where the basic confusion comes from. A lot of people have a different motive or a comfort motive when they want to start their own business. They say, I'm going to be my own boss. They say, I'm going to do whatever I want, whenever I want. For example, I have been an employee. I've had a career for about seven years and I have never worked as hard as I did in my days, of, uh, in my days as an entrepreneur. So that's what people need to understand. The motive is not comfort, it's discomfort. That's why 80% of startups close up in the first year or in the first one to five year of starting their own business. You need to be able to live, you need to be able to live with suffering. You need to be able to understand that it takes extreme level of hard work to put together a company that's going to thrive. Starting, a lot of people say starting is not easy, but I say finishing is the hardest part of becoming an entrepreneur. It's one thing to create a company, but it's entirely another thing to sustain that company. For that, you need a self-imposed discipline, an extreme work ethic, and you need to be able to work really, really harder than everybody else. So for any aspiring entrepreneurs out there, one thing that I tell them is there is no shortcut. You won't be able to be your own boss or you won't have the luxury of your own time when you start a business. If that's your motive, then I recommend that you don't start your own business. Otherwise, you're going to be you're going to suffer more than when you are back an employee. Uh, so I think one of the biggest like impacts and one of the biggest like puzzle pieces, I think, of a business is the employees, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest like growing um, majorities within the workforce are millennials and Gen Zs. So what's your approach for like leadership within entrepreneurship of this demographic? Yeah, I think I think, OK, like I said earlier, starting a business, you need a certain set of skills in order to start a business as an entrepreneur. But sustaining a business is a question of leadership. What kind of a leader are you? And how do you intend to sustain the business by employing a kind of leadership that works for you and your employees? Like you said, majority of the workforce right now, especially in Ethiopia, is Gen Y and Gen Z. So in order to be able to relate with these guys, you need to create a purpose, not just a living, but you got to help them to have an aspiration, a purpose and aspiration, a vision is very important to keep them going. So leadership is extremely critical to maintain your business. You create a business by becoming, by, by having different skills of an entrepreneur, but you need to be a leader. For me, when I first started the business, it was just managing one resource, one human resource, which is myself, and basically one material resource, which is my laptop. 
and in the first year of business we grew into 25 full-time employees and in the creative industry these are expensive assets these are critical assets for one year we had a hundred percent employee retention which is really hard in this country because a lot of talents especially in the creative and marketing industry jump from one company to another company they start their own business so the different thing that we did at spotlight is we created an aspiration for all of our employees and we set up a leadership team that could actually handle the financing not just the financing but the day-to-day -day running of the business we are extremely organized we put together all our deliverables in one central tracking software and we track them on a daily basis if our productivity rate is not increasing from week to week we sit down we sit down and we strategize i think in order to answer that question leadership is very critical to keep your employees engaged especially gen z and millennials so earlier you talked about the critical traits that a successful entrepreneur needs to build and start a successful business what would you say are the top three traits that um, would help a successful entrepreneur hmm. i think i've heard somebody define success as a tactical acquisition of skills which really resonated with me because the learning never ceases. So the first thing I would say, there's so many skills you need as an entrepreneur. That's what makes you different. So I would say learning is number one. You need to be able to learn aggressively. I think it was Jim Rohn that said, if someone manages to learn or to read a book for one hour every day on his area of expertise or business, that person is, is going to become a national expert in, in, in that specific topic or in that specific business and I think that's a no-brainer and one of the things that really did it for me in my first year of business is I had so many subscription in creative industry newsletters podcasts YouTube channels and they really helped me grow better and do you know industry standard stuff so learning is one the other one is organization you need to be extremely organized for example personally I'm not a very organized person as a career as an employee I had my ways around my job, but I wasn't really very organized at doing things. But one luxury that I never had as an entrepreneur was just do things whenever I wanted, do however I want to do them. I had to be organized. I had softwares like Active Collab and Trello to track projects on a regular basis, spreadsheets, sticky notes, and also yellow notepads all over the place. In addition to that, I also had my own central book where I track projects on a regular basis. So you need to be extremely organized if you want to, you know, beat competition and sustain your business as an entrepreneur. I always say one of the critical things that helped Spotlight in shining and thriving over the last two years is organization. We have a central book that helps us track projects on a regular basis. We have software that we use across different multiple departments and organization is definitely number one. And the third one, and this is a no brainer and it's my personal favorite is hard work. This is really the difference between a high achieving entrepreneur and somebody who starts a business and remains mediocre or closes within the first one to five years. So I would definitely say put in the hour. At Spotlight, we have this principle called 10 times. Every Spotlighter is supposed to work 10 times smarter, 10 times harder than competition. And that's what enabled us to become one of the top creative agency in the country within the first year of starting the company and it started from the scratch. So learning is a very critical trait, organization and hard work among many other traits. Okay, so to close off this episode, uh, it's gonna be a bit of a personal question. I'm sure in the audience there are gonna be a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs who would want to know, you know, everybody starts from somewhere. What did you think, what did you wish you knew before you started? Hmm. That's a very good question. I've always known that I was going to start my own business, but I never knew which area that I was going to start a business in. So what I would recommend for any aspiring entrepreneur that's listening to this podcast, I would pretty much say, be clear about what you want to do at first. I wasn't really clear about what I wanted to do when I first started a business. Do I want a full service creative agency or do I want do, do I just want a marketing and strategy agency? Am I just going to do digital marketing? And I think getting clarity within the first three months of starting business is what helped me. But if I can do it way before, I think the story would be a lot different. That's one. Get clarity. Have a compelling reason for doing what you're doing. But mentors. One thing I really never had the pleasure of having or the luxury of having is mentors. I had nobody to tell me 
This is how you need to start a business. This is how you set up an organization. This is the kind of leadership principle that you need to follow. So if you can manage to have a conversation with someone who made it in your area of industry or in your topic of business that you're trying to get into, sit down and have a conversation with them. I'm talking about the very finest details. How do you start the licensing process? What kind of taxes do you pay? I need you to deep dive into an extensive amount of research before jumping into your own business. So I would say mentors is extremely critical at first. Okay, I think that's a great way to end it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Ali, for having me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, comment down below. And if you'd like to send us some questions that we can talk about for the next episode, please, there's an email in the link description. Please just send us questions.